We've seen how the rocks of the Isle of Man have been formed over hundreds of millions of years. And there's a variety of types. There's limestone, lava, granite and so on. But this northern part of the island is quite different and, geologically speaking, much more recent. You know, there's a story about two glowworms living in a huge American redwood tree. One glowworm turns to the other and says, you know, they say these things actually grow. Nah, said the other glowworm, I've lived here all my life and I've never seen it move. And that is just like our relationship with the Earth. It's taken hundreds of millions of years for the continents to shift and for the rocks to twist and turn. But because we only live for a few short years, we assume nothing's happening and that it's all finished. The reality is, though, that the Earth is still changing at the same speed it's always done. It's just that it's so slow we can't see it. But there are exceptions to this, and here on the Isle of Man is one of the best places to see a landscape changing and reforming. And if you know where to look, there's a lot to see. For a start, there's lots of evidence around from the last ice age. We know the ice pushed down from the north, from Scotland, and actually there's quite a bit of Scotland left here on the beaches. This stone, for example, with its distinctive blue flecks, is a piece of granite from Ailsa Craig. That's a huge granite outcrop in the sea north of the Mull of Galloway. Such a stone is called an erratic, and it shouldn't be here. It's only here because the massive ice sheet pushed all the loose stone and gravel in front of it when it marched south thousands of years ago. Standing by this cliff here is like being next to a layer cake of time. Thousands of years of history are here in a single glance. At the bottom are layers of clay and deposits left by the ice as its waters melted and carried materials past here. Above it, like a layer of chocolate, we can see a line of peat from a period when there was a lot of vegetation here, which died and rotted and was compressed. This happened about three and a half thousand years ago, although the actual process would have only gone on for about a thousand years. Above this, evidence of human habitation from the Bronze Age 3,000 years ago. Flecks of charcoal in the silt from a river that once ran here indicate that early man burnt wood here, probably for cooking or keeping warm. Some of the stones used for cooking are also here, left where they were dumped before material covered them up. On the very top, the modern soil and grass used by the present-day farmers. So all this is courtesy of the great ice sheet pushing the material down from the north or simply melting. But it's important to realise that when this was happening, the coastline was actually several miles out from here. And since then, the sea has eroded away huge chunks of land. And these ancient people would have been living quite a bit inland. Now, the erosion is something we'll be looking at in a moment, but first, let's look at some of the other features the ice left behind. Just south of Kurt Michael is a mysterious dry valley. It certainly looks like an old riverbed, but where's the water? Well, this valley was once filled by a torrent of water. In fact, it was the river that cut it through the landscape. 10,000 years ago, the water melting off the ice-covered hills behind formed a huge lake where the road to Kirk Michael now runs, the TT course. To find its way to the sea, the water rushed over this hill, which was one of the sides of the lake. For many centuries, this river flowed down to the sea, and you can follow its channel to the coast. On the northern coast, running up to the Point of Air, there are some strange features as well. These cliffs were once right on the edge of the sea, but now they are set well back and the sea doesn't come anywhere near them. Given that so much of the coast seems to be vanishing around here, how has this happened? Well, the reason that these cliffs no longer meet the sea is quite extraordinary, and it's all to do with isostatic rebound. Not something you hear about every day. 
Now, the first thing to realise is that when this land was covered in ice, which some experts think could have been up to 750 metres thick, the weight on it was enormous, hundreds of millions of tonnes, and it actually pushed the land down into the Earth's crust. But when the ice melted, the weight was gone, and the land began to slowly rise up again. It's a slow process, and the sea levels have changed during this period. Nevertheless, all this land is very slowly rising, causing what is known as a raised beach. The sea can't get to these cliffs anymore. Perhaps the most spectacular remnant of the last ice age is to be seen here at Shellac Point, a couple of kilometres north of Ramsey. Here there is a towering sand cliff which is eroding away into the sea, and if it wasn't for the ice, it wouldn't be here. If you can picture the mountains in Scotland way up north there during the last ice age, and you can imagine there was a huge amount of snow falling on the top of them, which was freezing to form ice, and the weight of which was pushing down and pushing out a huge ice sheet across the British Isles. Now this ice sheet pushed forward and retreated several times over a period of about 60,000 years, and the last time that it pushed forward, it stopped right there. And look at what it left behind. If you can imagine that the front of this block is like the front of the ice sheet, then you can see that as it pushed forward, it collected up a huge amount of sand and gravel in front of it. And as the ice retreated, it left a massive ridge. And that hill is one of those ridges. In fact, it's one of the most spectacular examples of the last push of an ice sheet that you'll find anywhere. And if you look down on the area, you can see other features as well. As the ice started to melt and retreat, its waters eroded the material it had brought with it, making valleys and rounding the hills. These folds and valleys are distinctive from the air, and this range of hills actually runs across a good deal of the northern plain, marking the line where the ice stopped. The waters from the melting ice weren't the only force at work on this northern plain. There's a much more powerful force that's still at work today, the sea. And although it may look calm this afternoon, I can assure you it's causing a lot of problems for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. 